Hi, it's nice to see you again. I'm Jenny May Almquist, and today we're going to talk about the very ending of the trial, closing statements. Really, it's not a closing statement. It's closing argument. Just like in the opening, you were summarizing what might happen. In the closing, you're doing a summary, but this time it's not neutral at all. You are arguing and persuading for your side. You can comment on the evidence in closing argument. You can say, for example, did you notice how the security guard shifted in his seat when I asked him how afraid he was on the day of the robbery? You want to summarize what happened during the trial, again, thinking about those most important points and not going every, over every detail. You want to also make the week stronger. Any little holes or flaws in your case or any big points that the other side scored you want to cover them and minimize them in your closing argument. If you ignore them, maybe the jury will think that the person on the other side scored a point against you. And remember, you're going to be quite passionate at the end of the long trial. You want to keep it courteous. You never want to personally attack your opponent throughout the entire trial. And always remember to stand when addressing the judge. That's just good manners. And that's how courtrooms work. There's a time and place for everything. Okay, so what should you have in your closing argument? You've presented all your facts, you've built your wall, hopefully you've poked some holes and taken some bricks out of the other side's wall in the process. You kind of want to bring things back to your opening argument. Do you remember how we talked about that memory is only, memory is improved if you hear something more than once? The themes that you talked about in your opening should be mirrored in your closing. They should kind of run parallel to each other so that they cover the same things. You really only want to talk about the most important bricks in the wall. You don't want to get into the nitty gritty details of everything that everybody said during every testimony, because you'll be there all day and the jury will go to sleep. I call this the helicopter view. You see this helicopter flying over the trees? You're not going to talk about every leaf on the tree. You're going to talk about the overall view in a way that's most favorable to your side in closing argument. And of course, you're going to really emphasize the other side's weaknesses. Those are weaknesses that you anticipated from the very beginning when you made the list of points that you could score on cross-examination. Hopefully you actually asked those questions and got the answers you wanted. So a lot happened during the trial. How do I sum it all up? Well, I like to use three as the magic number. You know, when I was taking trial advocacy in law school, my professor said to me, if you can't say it in three points in three minutes, don't bother saying it at all. So again, you want to list all the things that should go into your closing, and then you want to edit down to the very important points. Let's talk a little bit about what kinds of things to include in your closing. At the beginning of the trial during opening, you don't know whether the witness is going to look like he or she is telling the truth. But at the end of the day, in closing argument, you can talk about what's called the credibility of the witness. How believable was each witness? What were their motives? What were their biases? Why might they have a reason to lie? So let's take, for example, our security guard in our robbery case. What if it came out during the trial that the security guard actually knew the accused? or actually knew one of the accused family members, you would certainly want to mention that in closing because it goes to credibility. Similarly, if anybody has a bias, obviously a character witness is going to want to testify in favor of the accused. Corroboration. That's a really great legal word that just means saying the same thing. If there is more than one witness, who basically told the same story, it's really important. That bolsters and supports their credibility. That's called corroboration. If you have a corroborating witness, you want to talk about that in your closing because it strengthens the points and facts that were presented. In your closing, you want to talk about whether you met your burden of proof and whether the other side didn't meet the burden of proof. So if you were the defense, 
and you're trying to show that your client is innocent of robbery, you would show all the doubts, all the ways that you pulled bricks out of the other side's wall. You would basically talk about the distance, the, the difficulty in identifying the accused, things like that, to show that it was not proven beyond a reasonable doubt that your client was guilty. One thing that people do all the time, and it's really hard to avoid, is overselling your case. You believe in it so much that sometimes in closing argument or throughout the trial, you might be tempted to overstate things. You might be tempted to make things look better than they really are. You have to be very honest with yourself about what the weaknesses in your case are, because if you oversell, the jury is not going to believe you and is not going to rule in your favor. So let's take a quick look at some of the differences between opening statements and closing statements or arguments. Opening statement is neutral. It gives a summary of what the evidence will show. And it's really a roadmap. You're not drawing any inferences. You're not taking facts and drawing conclusions from them. You're not saying things like, oh, because the person sat in the witness stand a certain way, they might be not telling the truth. You're really not going into the law either in opening statement. In closing, you can draw inferences and conclusions. You can say that because the evidence showed something, it tends to prove something. You can also use analogies. You can discuss the law. You can talk about what you proved in order to establish your case. And you can certainly talk about biases, credibility, and motive. You want to be persuasive and argue based on what the jury now knows. They've read the book now, and you are writing the last chapter. Here's a sample of what it would sound like if you were doing a closing argument. Members of the jury, you have now had an opportunity to review all the facts and hear all the evidence from all the witnesses in this case. Let's review some of the things that we learned throughout this trial. First, we learned that none of the bank employees really got a good look at the at the robber who came into the bank that day. And in fact, not one of them could positively say that my client, Madam X, was the one who wielded a gun. You can see from the, from the discussion, you can see from the testimony of the security guard that he was way too far away from the robbery to be able to really even see who was committing it. Ladies and gentlemen, Accusing someone of, of a crime is a very serious thing. I ask you, has the other side proven beyond a reasonable doubt that my client is guilty? Absolutely not. Every single witness casts some doubt on whether or not my client was there on the day of the robbery. Ladies and gentlemen, you also heard from a character witness. You heard from Madam X's best friend who has known her for her entire life. You've heard that she's a good student. You've heard that she had no particular financial needs that would cause her to rob a bank. I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, is this someone who would have committed this heinous crime? I think when you review all of the evidence and look at what the witnesses said, you will see that the answer to that is a resounding no. My client should be found not guilty. I thank you for your time and for your service. You always want to ask for the result that you're trying to get, both in the opening statement and at the closing argument. You always want to make sure that you're making a personal appeal to the jury to rule in your favor. Thank you so much for your attention. It's been really fun to share some of these things with you, and I wish you good luck with your mock trials. <laughs>